I meant the continuity, even if the body decays, the mind is continuous and then it just um, goes to the next life event. Then the continuity is shown. But self can be <coughs> not far from mind. In this case, you know, what is connoted by self is more than mind. <laughs> Presently we are trying to work with the mind and which is not sufficient. Yeah, and this purification, what would it mean? It would mean understanding of the reality and based on this understanding, right? Your desire, thought and expectation. Line up your desire, thought and expectation along with the understanding of the reality. So it purifies. That is the meaning of purification. What you have done is, you have accumulated all these desire, thought and expectation without verifying whether this is based on the reality or not based on the reality. That is the corruption of the mind. The impure mind is what? You see, we have been hearing these words. Now we have to, you know, practically see what it means. Right? The impure mind and the pure mind. What is the meaning of it? That we have to understand. And I will keep repeating this a number of times that don't try to evaluate others. Okay? Start looking into yourself. Look at your state of mind. Look at your state of desire, thought and expectation. Right? Are they based on understanding of reality? Or they are based on assumption? Are they pure, impure? What is the meaning of purity? What is the meaning of impurity? All that you have to start looking into yourself, not the other. The unfortunate thing is that we are quite used to, you know, evaluate others and not ourselves. <laughs> so let's see, whether these activities are going on, desire, thought, expectation, in you or not going on in this. Going on. Similarly, you keep taking some work from the body, right? Like eating, walking. Now, is this continuous in nature? Is this temporary in nature? Yes, sir. So, we'll have to look this, look at this, whether this is continuous in nature or not, whether this is temporary in nature or not. So, I will leave it for you to look into. <coughs> Another thing which I want to just explain you know, further is that if you look at the activity of the body, it has a definite recognition and fulfillment. But if you look at the activity of cell, It has this activity of knowing, assuming recognizing and fulfilling. This is interesting to understand. Okay. This I am leaving open for you to keep thinking, right? Keep looking into yourself and find out whether these desires, thoughts, expectations are going on in you continuously or temporarily. <coughs> Similarly, this work which you are taking from the body, like eating, walking and so on, you can take this work temporarily or continuously. Let me explain this, you know. 
the activity of recognizing and fulfilling in the body. But activity of knowing, assuming, recognizing and fulfilling in the body. So let me do, you know, just try to explain this. If you look at the body, its recognition and fulfillment with the things outside appears to be very definite. For example, if you are piercing a needle in the body, then depending on whether this needle is harder than your skin of the body or not, this needle will go inside or not go inside. Right? So this is very certain, very definite. If the needle is harder than the skin of the body, it will go inside the body. If the needle is softer than the skin of the body, right, <coughs> it will not go inside the body. So this recognizing and fulfilling in the body with the you know, things outside is very definite. What is it? Is it definite or definite? It's definite, right? If the needle is harder, it will go inside. If it is not harder, it will not go inside. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the response of the cell, okay, for example, if somebody is piercing a needle in your body, right? will you cooperate with him or will you oppose him? <laughs> <laughs> what will you do? Somebody is piercing a needle in your body. Level of cell. Huh? <laughs> so if it is a doctor, you will cooperate with the doctor to pierce this needle in your body. If he is an enemy, <laughs> so if he is an enemy, then you will cooperate with him or oppose him? <coughs> oppose him, right? So you can see your recognition and fulfillment will depend upon your assumption. If you assume him to be the doctor or a friend, you will you know, cooperate with him to pierce that needle in your body. If you assume him to be an enemy, right, you will oppose him. So you can see your recognition and fulfillment depends upon your assumption. If your assumption is different, your recognition and fulfillment will be different. I just write this here. It's a very important thing to understand. Operating with assumption, with assuming, if this is different, recognition and fulfillment will be different. Right? The same needle being pierced in your body by someone, if you assume him to be the doctor, your recognition and fulfillment will be different. If you assume him to be an enemy, your recognition and fulfillment will be different. Is that clear? So if the assumption is different, the recognition and fulfillment will be different. Is that clear? But when it comes to the body, it is definite. Whether an enemy or a doctor, if he is piercing the needle and the needle is not harder than the body, it will not go inside. So this is definite part. This is not definite part, right? 
So I keep extending this example, saying that, you know, if you are lying on the operation bed, you know, mm. operation table, with the assumption that the one who is operating it, you, is a doctor. And in the meantime, you get a phone call, saying that this doctor is hand in hand with your enemy. <laughs> what will happen? <laughs> You will jump out of the table, isn't it? <laughs> now you can see, no physical input has come to you. The only information on phone, right, that he is hand in hand with the enemy, right, has changed your assumption. Because the assumption has changed, therefore recognition and fulfillment has changed. What do you think, Mahapatraji? <laughs> if, if you have come to know that the doctor is hand in hand with the, your enemy, what will he do? He will continue to lie on the oppression bed? Immediately I will move that with that person. And what has happened? Only assumption has changed. Nothing else. But redemption has changed, therefore recognition and fulfillment has changed. If you can understand this properly, you will be able to understand the source of indefinite conduct in human life. The indefinite conduct in human being is not at the level of body, it is at the level of self. At the level of self, right? It is because of different assumptions. So, if assumptions are different, recognition and fulfillment will be different. Right? Excuse me, sir. Sir, may I kindly have your permission to speak? Sir, so, uh, keeping the yeah. keeping your example of doctor and uh, an enemy in, in the mind, can we say the degree of natural acceptance is situational? Depending on. Uh, keeping your example of uh, a doctor and an enemy, can we say the degree of natural acceptance is situational? Because uh, I personally feel that natural acceptance, what is naturally acceptable to an individual is situational because we tend to accept a doctor placing a needle into our skin, but we may not accept the enemy coming into our room and then pressing a needle into our skin. So can we see natural acceptance? The degree of natural acceptance is situational. See, if you ask yourself, what is your natural acceptance? To keep your body in good health? Or not? Or different people will have different opinion about it. <laughs> what is your natural acceptance? Keep the body good health? Yes. So that natural acceptance is very clear. Okay. Now in order to keep the body good health, if I find that there is some problem with it, I would like to get it rectified. So, in this process of how to ensure the health of the body, if I find okay, that some treatment has to be given to the body, there is some problem with the health, right? and I see that this doctor will be able to provide that health, I am you know, consulting the doctor or I am allowing him to operate. So my natural acceptance is there, intact, you know. Acceptance for keeping the body in good health. But when I come to know that this doctor is hand in hand with the enemy, <coughs> right, I will be able to see that he is not going to keep the body in good health. So instead of becoming a help to me, it be, he will become a you know, trouble for me. So sir, uh, during the second thought, I think uh or uh, natural acceptance is being corrupted by the preconditioning? No, the natural acceptance is still to keep the body in good health. 
<laughs> we are trying to work out the detail of how to keep the body in good health. That de details may be different. The details may be different of how to keep the body in good health. But better, whether to keep the body in good health or not, right, is there any disagreement here? So when we are talking about this natural acceptance, we are essentially trying to find out what is natural for us, you know, to do and what is not natural for us to do. The example that you have taken has to do with how to do it, not with what to do. So if you ask this question, whether to keep the body in good health, not to keep the body in good health, right? You have an answer from your natural acceptance. Keep the body in good health. That is your natural acceptance. Then how to keep the body in good health? Those details are being worked out, right? By getting it operated by this doctor or not getting it operated by this doctor. This is the details of how to do it. So, so uh, when you say that, does it mean the scope of natural acceptance is limited to the body and self, not the external environment? No, no. It is. Uh, it is related, I know, uh, to the self, the family, and finally up to the existence. But it is to do with, you know, this natural acceptance can, you know, through natural acceptance, I can verify what I have to do at each of these levels and what I do not have to do at each of these levels. Right? Then when it comes to working out the details of how to implement that, there you can have differences. Okay, I will take another example to you know, exemplify this. If you ask in the relationship, what is naturally acceptable to you to have the feeling of respect or disrespect? <coughs> respect, right? That answer you get from your natural acceptance. Now, when it comes to how to express this feeling of respect, then there can be different ways of doing it, right? <coughs> Depending upon your exposition to some society, culture, you know. On this thing. So somebody may say hello to express the respect. Somebody may touch feet, you know, to express the respect. Somebody may kiss the other person to express the respect. These are the different ways of respecting, you know, communicating this feeling of respect. So this issue of how to communicate respect may be different. But whether to have the feeling of respect or disrespect, there is no disagreement about this. So the natural acceptance can help you to answer this question, what to do, what not to do. Okay. Whether to have the feeling of respect or feeling of disrespect. But then this expression of the feeling of respect, this may be different in different traditions, different societies, right? different you know, kind of uh, places. There you need some agreement you know, about how to express it. But there is no disagreement about the feeling of respect or disrespect. In any tradition, in any way you are expressing that feeling, what is naturally acceptable to you is the feeling of respect, not the disrespect. That much we can all, you know, check with our natural acceptance. Sir, I have a doubt, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, I am confused now, sir. Uh, as uh, Sir told that uh, we can't be in continuous uh, anger. Uh, anger is a feeling, and happiness is also a feeling. So we are dealing with both emotions. Uh, sir told that uh, we can cannot be angry continuously, sir. Right? So, so sir. Uh, <laughs> now I am uh, confused, no, sir. Uh, if we can't be in continuous anger, sir, uh, can we? Is it possible to be in continuous happiness also, sir? Because both are emotions, sir. And uh, another doubt is that, sir, uh, being a Buddhist, sir, what my parents and my teachers have told that uh, in order to be liberated, sir, we have to do all with the feelings, sir. So what I feel here is that we are, uh, what we are doing is we are meditating happiness, sir, uh, and we are craving for happiness, sir. So happiness is a feeling, sir, and it is an emotion, sir. And uh, 
what I have learned is that we have to do all with the feelings and emotions uh, in order to get liberated. Uh, if we uh, go in pursuit of happiness, uh, is it possible that uh, what I have learned and what sir is stating that I am in now uh, confusion state? So which one is uh, correct and which one is wrong? Thank you. You see, not very clear, you know. Um, <coughs> many things we have just, you know, interpreted on our own way. For example, what about the feeling of love, feeling of compassion? What do you think? The feeling of love, feeling of compassion. If you have this feeling after liberation, liberation. <laughs> After liberation, will you have the feeling of love, feeling of compassion or not?
three conditions, right? One is to be with unhappiness. Okay? Is it natural for you? To be free from unhappiness. To be with continuous happiness. And if this is there, this is included in this, right? This third includes the second, right? If you are with continuous happiness, right? It will include free, being free from unhappiness. Does it apply the other way? That if you are free from unhappiness, you are necessarily ensuring continuity of happiness? So this is where you want to reach and that is what we are talking about from the beginning that we want to live with continuous happiness which includes being free from unhappiness. Right? And this is the bondage. And this is Satantra. Called Bandhan, this is called Moksha. We call Satantrata. Satantrata is living with what is naturally acceptable to me. And what is naturally acceptable to me is my Swatva. This would mean I am not living with something which is not naturally acceptable to me. That is the meaning of this. This would mean I am living with something which is not naturally acceptable to me. So the problem, um, essential idea of this I was discussing was, the problem is not with the feelings only. The problem is with the wrong feelings. Right? So it's not that we have to get rid of the feeling. We have to get rid of the feelings which are not naturally acceptable to us. Which means we have to ensure feelings which are naturally acceptable to us. Feelings which are naturally acceptable to us. We want to ensure this feeling. Deal with those feelings. Right? So this feeling of love is naturally acceptable to me. So I want to live with this feeling. Right? The expression of this feeling of love is what is called compassion. Right? So I have to live this I want to live with this feeling of compassion. Because it is naturally acceptable to me. It is not trying to get rid of the feelings. It is trying to <coughs> ensure the right feelings. Right? Which may also include getting rid of the wrong feelings. Right? So, right feelings based on right understanding. So, I have to ensure right understanding, the knowledge, the gyan. And then, I have to ensure the right feelings, the right bhav. That is all I need to do to ensure continuity of happiness, to live with Swatantrata.